Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video on the motorhome. I know you've all eagerly been awaiting this one and summer is only here once, so it needs doing, needs turning around and needs to be done. So there is a fair bit of cleaning up to do in here still. It all needs cleaning up just to finish it off. But before we do that, well, I'm going to concentrate on that. But originally, I said I was going to take these out. And in the comments, everyone said, no, leave them in. You don't need to. You don't need to put this new floor in all the way underneath. But regardless, I think I probably am going to do that because these do need work. This is not a new motorhome. And you can see where this actual, I think it's this piece here, pulls out. You can see that's actually broken, that top piece. The bottom piece is fine. Top piece there has got some bits broken off it. And if you went to pull that bed out, number one, it's got a step up there. And then it'll just fall off the edge. It's actually broken. That, that plastic rail is broken. You can see it's broken off all the way along there. Till you get to here, there's a little bit left. And this side, obviously, at some point, that has happened before. And somebody has placed that little piece of batten on there. And also, just looking at that piece of batten, this must have happened while someone was on holiday or out on the road. Because if you look at those curved edges, this is actually off the back of the bathroom door. So someone's done a quick fix on it. And if you look underneath, you can actually see there is all parts missing. It wasn't very strong to start with. I'm, I'm not really sure. I mean, maybe it was all right when it was new, but it's not very strong. So somebody's put a little piece of batten under here. And Chris said, if, Rob, if you actually remove those sections, I can get them in the woodwork shop. Actually run something down really nice to go all the way along here. And exactly the same the other side. And it will be nice and strong and it will last forever more. So I am going to give... All of the ups, all of the everything up high, I am going to be given a bit of a clean. But in the before I do that, I am going to remove both of these so that Chris can start work on them and try and get them in good condition. I think you would all agree that actually made sense to do what we just done there that literally took me five minutes to get that out i've now got it outside and chris is going to take it in the woodwork shop and do those repairs but that is going to make such a nice job of putting that floor down especially when i remove that side i may even go as far as to remove that water tank it's going to be a couple of pipes and a couple of wires and it's just it's going to finish it off. It's going to be really nice. And now, of course, as well, I'm also able to get to all this wall. You can see where someone's been sitting, like the dirty patch here. And underneath, it's all clean. And you can see there's a fair bit of grime there. Little air vent there for the system. Yeah, really coming along. I'm going to crack on and get this side out as well. Because once Chris has got that done and the floor's down, that can all go back in, and I'm sure that's all gonna be really, really nice. Let's carry on, this was very easy to get out. It actually lifted out, but it is supposed to be screwed in. So, just three little screws through the back here, but the screws was actually out. So, again, I don't know, someone has made repairs to this in the past. Let's just try and get it all uniform and make it last so that it don't have to happen again. Really, really chuffed with how easy that come out. was a little bit harder to get out i'm not going to lie it was quite difficult because the actual screws themselves some of them were at an angle and just getting on top of that tank to get up underneath them was actually quite difficult i only had to remove one pipe for the tank but just look how black and dirty and horrible it is now that it's all moved out of the way but this really definitely did pay to just remove these it's, 
that lino now is going to fold as far under there as I actually want it to go. Am I going to remove the heater and the tank? Probably not. I'm not quite sure yet. See how far we do go. There is a little bit of damage on this cupboard. And I noticed that previously when looking inside the cupboard. But you've got half the wheel arch in there. And then you've got obviously this little pocket on the front. So shame about that. But like I say, nothing's inside there. So we will repair that and just patch it up. And it is just a little piece of hardboard. So yeah, quite straightforward. Chris is actually going to work on those. I've got them outside now. So they're both sitting there ready for him. I've just got some cleaning products. I've just got the um, Jenny Chem multi-purpose cleaner today. I'm going to use that and just go through. Start by doing all of the roof. Clean all the cupboards inside and out. Try and get this fingerprint dust off. Just while Chris is working on those bits, it makes sense for me to continue on. That fingerprint dust is everywhere. And just try and get quite a bit of this cleaned up inside. And hopefully we can pull this floor up. I mean, it's going to go all the way in there, isn't it? it? Is it going to be a shame not to stick it all the way under the tank? We'll see what Chris says, see how we get on. cutting in this quick but check this out <laughs> look at the difference see the difference in color there i've just cleaned that one part and these back cupboards here and obviously it looked a bit like this and that was with just that multi-purpose cleaner let's carry on and get the rest of it done i think they're going to want to come down yeah they're going to want to be unscrewed and cleaned inside but you see how dirty it all is it really shows up on camera Let's get the rest of it done. there guys done so much off camera otherwise it just would have been time lapse throughout the whole video and that's not what we wanted to achieve you can see where that had that little hole in the floor the dirty patch there but that was really really difficult to get up it was very very stuck down it's still sticky now it is quite tacky so i've got the Lino out here on the floor. I'm going to take this in the workshop, lay it down, lay, roll the new one out, lay that down, and I'm going to get Chris to help me cut it. But the repairs, they're all done. He's done them. See that nice new little bit of batten all the way along there? He's re glued all of these, tightened them up. All of the slats are now lovely and tight. And on this one, you can see where it was all broken along and it had these little bits of broken plastic. Chris said, oh, I'll just get rid of it. So he's completely cut it off. And you can see, there's a bit of, bit of grime on there. Two nice new battens on there, all done. And of course, glued it all up and stiffened all of that up. So once that goes in, it's all gonna work perfectly how it should. So let's get this bit of lino cut and then uh, start the process of getting that laid down. But yeah, pulling that up, your fingers went quite numb a few times at the stop it really really was sticky you can still see all the glue on there i wasn't expecting it to be sticky because it had those raised areas i thought it's not, there's no way it's going to be sticky and it was so just a little test fit guys before we actually start gluing it down there is still some very very minor trimming that i need to do but for the most part how much better does that look it just looks completely different it's transformed it in here and really nice now having it all clean so do you know what we're actually going to leave it it's got quite late in the day and come back to this in the morning but really really chuffed with how it's turned out and really happy with the choice we made on the color 
I know it looks a little bit off and that is like the lines, but that is because the water tank, you can see the little wooden stops on top of it. I haven't screwed that back down and squared it off yet, but yeah, we're really, really happy with it. Guys, it's actually the next day and it was so much work actually getting all this back in because now it's all stiffened up where Chris has repaired all of the little broken pieces of wood, etc., etc. It was so tight getting it all back in. And although I started time-lapsing, putting this side in, I just really, really struggled. So in the end, I just decided to put the phone down, just go slowly, slowly, and just concentrate on it. And now we have got to this point. Obviously that needs to be pushed equally, but yeah, all fixed. He's put a nice new piece of wood on the top there. And as you can see, it looks almost exactly the same color as the wood that come out of it. That little set of drawers is still not permanently fixed down there. And I'm not going to leave that like that. That needs to be permanently fixed down. So I'm going to concentrate on getting that down and then actually put the furniture back in here because it is all up in the uh, overhead locker there and it's been there for quite a while. So let's carry on. A relief to see that all back together guys that was a bit of a jigsaw but looks amazing need to take all these plastic bags off one thing I have been putting off even though I should have done this before I put the floor down it's cleaning the bathroom never gonna be a nice job but I said from the start of the video I'm using that Jenny chem multi-purpose cleaner and I'm gonna put a link for it in the description watch this on that fingerprint dust that's it all on there What fingerprint dust? Right, I'm going to get this all cleaned up. Look how mucky it is. And I think all the water's going to stay because of the way I got it parked. I'll have to turn it around, I think. But let's carry on, get this all nice. What a difference. It really has come up nice. I've cleaned out all inside these cupboards. They're all washed out. You can see how shiny they are. And what I've done was turn the water on and actually used the little shower head to rinse everything off. All these little bits. I just want wiping out and that is purely because the moat room's on a bit of a hill you can see a little bit of water staying in there but for the most part look how lovely and nice that all come up very very clean and tidy need to do something with that blind it's a bit broken but that is a frosted window and that is only a fly screen the actual blind itself is fine so i think we'll move on now to the tv Let's go round and get a TV for it and get that fitted. And then that will be the back half of it done. And obviously all the bathroom area done. I went for the JVC purely because it is a bit thinner at the back. And once it is mounted to the wall, you're all probably thinking I'm a cheapskate. That still weren't cheap, was it? I found one at Argos. It was only 149 but out of stock. And this one was 179.99. I think they get, I remember buying a bigger telly for 200 pound once, but this is a smart TV, so it's going to have all the apps on it and Netflix, Prime, everything you're going to need. Let's get back. I think we'll ask Chris to uh, fit the bracket. If I put it, it's going to be wonky, isn't it? Let's get back. We're all unpacked. Chris has measured up and we are ready to fit it. He's just gone to get some screws, a bit of batten to go on the back of it, and we can get it fitted up on the wall. I have taken, you probably noticed, the plastic off these cushions as well. I've still got to do that side, but it does make a lot of difference sitting here with no plastic all over them. I've definitely got Chris to fit the bracket because we wanted it straight, mate, right? <laughs> well, guys, Chris said I should have gone for probably a bit of a better bracket. Yes, yeah, a bit woodly. It was $9.99 off of eBay. But as you can see, he's fitted the telly. And I thought, for those of you that haven't seen it... I think that this is going to be... Chris? <laughs> oh, 
Where are you? All right, I got, I got them for you. Well done, mate. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you doing? Just give it a try. Oh, for God's sake. That white man in the background. So that is the TV. That is the TV, all fitted. Chris initially said you measured it up and 22 inch would have fitted in there like perfect. But you couldn't buy a smart TV in 22 inch. It was 24 inch only. But as you can see, it's perfect. If you're tilting it and moving it around, it'll be hard to get to the switches. But as it is, you can get to all the switches and that's perfect, isn't it? And it has just finished it off here now. Yeah. Finished it off. It's just a shame it's a little bit... Wibbly wobbly. Yeah, driving along the road, that's not going to be... Uh, I think you're going to have to get a better bracket, don't you? Yeah, hopefully people can hear you because we are inside. But Chris did just say there, if you didn't hear him, guys, we are working on a mic. Um, it does need a better bracket. It's just not good enough when you're driving. It's going to be wobbling all over the place. So I'm going to sit here and enjoy the rest of this video. And then we'll continue <laughs> we'll continue on so a little bit of tidying up there guys after chris finished what he was doing and then i did crack straight on with getting all of this put back together so the fire's all back in there and unfortunately i've put the silver screws in there that come out of it i think they were supposed to have black caps on them so what i'm going to do is actually remove them and put some black screws back in there but the oven it all cleaned up very very nice the grill um, again, all cleaned up nice. I've wiped all these over, but there's a few watermarks on there. But it is all now very, very usable. Everything's all cleaned out. I did clean the fridge out as well. I know there's a lot of yellow marks in there, but it is very, very old, isn't it? 1995. So that is the best we can get that. There is two little silver shelves that go in now. And I am actually, they're up there down there. I want to try and do something with those because they have got like rusty bits on them. They just look a bit untidy. Again, I think I showed the bathroom earlier on in the video. Just come up so, so lovely. Really, really happy with that. No marks in there. No, nothing at all to do. The cab area, I did clean this up in part one of the video, but I have since got a nice new up-to-date cd player for it with a usb so again that's something else that I'm gonna, there's going to be some little jobs that i need to do off camera but i'm going to get them nipped in the bud over the next couple of days but not going to film it so fit a radio there's quite a nasty chin up here on the wall so we're going to be fitting a clock up there and then i think that is pretty much it a couple of more of these like the little window brackets here that one's sorting out and this window's quite scratched but it is what it is. This window just needs moving along slightly. If you remember, I said this was one I actually fitted when I was at the chap's house because it had a broken window and he had the window to put in it. So I fitted that there. Yeah, just a couple of other little jobs, but overall really, really chuffed with it. And there's not going to be another video on it, but let's go and sit inside, crunch the numbers, and I'll tell you the plans. Not quite sure how to play this one, guys, because... There's been three or four videos on this and quite a lot of you in the comments said, yeah, you're keeping that, that's your new motorhome. Quite a lot of people said, yeah, Chris is keeping it. But then saying that, every car we put on, people always say, Chris, yeah, I could tell by the way Chris was looking at that. Yeah. The most recent was the Land Rover Discovery Sport. Everyone's like, yeah, Chris is keeping that. And I said, not with a gear sticky, ain't no. 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 He's got two used to automatic, so that Discovery Sport will be for sale when it's done. So let's, let's get it out now, and let's get it out in the open. So many people guessed how much, well, made a guess of how much I paid for it, and not one person was right. Uh, one person in particular said, I know for a fact he got it for 1,500 quid. Well, I'd love to know where you could get 10 of those for that sort of money. It'd be brilliant. So I was scouring through eBay and two motorhomes come up cheap at the same time. There was that one and there was one identical with the same year, same spec, same layout. Everything was the same. Very, very similar miles. And that motorhome had damp and it was actually a dealer. And he wrote in his description, I would retail this van at 14995 
but it has got a small amount of damp and so you had it advertised for 10995 then that one there was advertised for eight and a half grand i'll include a screenshot now if i've still got it And after a bit of negotiation on the phone, I actually got him down £7,500, which I thought was good. And that was because I'd done a quick check on it and it actually come up as Category D back in 2000 or something like that. So it has had a little prang before that one and it's been repaired. So I kind of weighed it up. Would you say that was right, Chris, to weigh it up at the same sort of thing as the other guy? He's just got a bit of damp. He wanted eleven grand, and that one had had a previous prang yeah. and been repaired. So I thought that's like 10, 11 grand all day, all done, all nice. So the guy said, there's no secret. You know, it's been off the road for quite a long time. Guys, after a bit more negotiation, I paid £6,500 for that motorhome. And you definitely can't buy them for that sort of money. And you definitely can't buy them this time, type of, time of year for that kind of money. So I paid six and a half grand for it and got a friend that, he works full time, but he likes to earn a little bit of extra money. I knew that was MOT'd. I said, do you want to run me up there and I'll give you a drink for doing it? So I put 40 quid in his car and I actually give him 80 pound for taking me up there because it was a couple of hours, hour there, hour back. So that was 120. The keys, we went to WK Shoe Repairs and Trophies on the Isle of Sheppey. And I did put all of his details in the description in the last video. 20 quid he charged me to do me a key. He's probably a little bit dearer than that but we've been friends for a long, long time. TV bracket. Weren't, weren't impressed with that, Chris, was you? No, a bit flimsy. 10 quid off of eBay. And Chris said he don't think it was worth a fiver. Mm -hmm. Not very good at all. The TV, I'll, I showed you all the receipt, £179. Now, Comline supplied all of those parts. It was a sponsored video, so they didn't actually cost us anything. But Comline don't supply uh, cam belts, uh, water pumps etc so i got all of that from the motor factors so the oil and filter was 38 pounds water pump was 84 pounds 84 pounds timing belt kit was 136 pounds and we've got down in miscellaneous because there's a little tiny light on the top of the cab that i've got to order i want to take it over and have the tires inspected there's a chance it might need some but they actually all do look good but i'm going to get them to take all four off balance them all, inspect them, and actually do the tracking on it. So that is a total of £7,277. And I know everyone that wants a motorhome would love to give that sort of money for one, especially in the sorted state that that is now in. Sorry, and in that miscellaneous, I'm going to have to upgrade the TV bracket. So I, <laughs> I think that that motorhome is definitely worth £11,000. There's not one on there for less than 15 at the moment, like for like for that. So four grand off, 11 grand, definitely worth it. And I know a lot of you already Instagram me saying, I'll be interested in that when it's done, Rob. How much is it going to be? Please, can I put my name down for it? First of all, guys, we don't put people's names down for it. We put a, a vehicle out on Instagram and it's sort of first come, first serve. If the first person he's not interested, I'll move on to the next person, etc., etc., and that's the way it works. But, unfortunately, with the moat roam, I'm not saying I'm keeping it, I'm not saying I'm keeping it by any means, but I've currently got Claire online trying to book us onto a campsite over the next couple of weeks, just for two nights, and you said it's a good idea, Chris, yeah. didn't you? Get out there, snag it, go and have a couple of nights away in it, I'm quite looking forward to it. I really am looking forward to it. So at the moment, it's not going anywhere. But that's not to say that it may pop up one day on Instagram for sale in the near future. But at the moment, no, I'm going to go and have a bit of a summer holiday in it. Now, quite a lot of you already know I'm not going to bore you too much and I'm not going to get into it too much. But we have got some little dogs and one of them's just been diagnosed with a heart murmur. And Claire said, I'm that, I mean, they've given him they said a year or two, but basically she said, I'm not going to go on holiday and leave the dog because if something happened to him while we was away, I'd never forgive myself. So I've kind of decided that we're going to have an holiday and that and we'll take the dog with us. So that is going to be the end of the motorhome video. 
I do hope that you did enjoy it. I know you all enjoy the numbers at the end. Let me know in the comments section what you think. Was it cheap when I bought it? Was it cheap now? And do you think it'll be cheap at £11,000? Don't forget, please like, subscribe and share. And we'll see you very, very soon in the next one.